salvation. This is a call for salvation. If you do not know Jesus, this is a call for salvation. A call for salvation. Respond to the call for salvation. If you don't know the Savior, this is his presentation. Hello, welcome to Voices in the Wilderness. I'm Reverend Maria. The Bible tells us that John the Baptist was a messenger, a voice in the wilderness, calling to his generation to repent. Jesus also said to repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repenting simply means to regret your sins, to change your way of thinking, and to change your conduct. Our own generation is in trouble. We too need to change our conduct and transform our minds. At a national and international level, we're plagued with, wo uh, with wars, rumors of wars, terrorism, drugs, the breakdown of the family, moral confusion, a, a failing economy, a, a health crisis, and numerous other societal ills. Yet we believe that with God, there is hope. We can live our lives by a higher standard and influence our families, our communities, and the world. Joining us again for part two of the amazing uh, message that will help heal your spirit, soul, and body is Dr. Eliezer Ben-Joseph. Welcome back for part two. Thank you so much. I can't believe how <laughs> fast part one just disappeared. And for those of you that have, did not see part one, you have to see it because it was an amazing part where you were telling us about your, pe your testimony of how you uh, met Jesus met Christ. Christ. So if you can just recap and then we'll go into the rest of our program. Absolutely. I'm one of those educated guys. Uh, just my background, I've had three doctorates, a doctorate in science, a doctorate in medicine, a doctorate in naturopathic medicine. I studied chiropractic and osteopathic in Israel, uh, Chinese medicine in Sri Lanka, wow. um, Ayurvedic medicine in India in a temple, physical therapy in Amsterdam. And I lived in a teepee two years studying with the Indians. But wow. I come from an unbroken line of rabbis mm -hmm. to the 15th century. And wow. my grandfather was an Orthodox rabbi. My father was a devout atheist, a radical mm. atheist. But I had a death experience. And uh, I was trained to be a rabbi until I was 13. And then mm. my bar mitzvah, my father said, you want to go back to public school? And I went back to public school. Mm -hmm. but. You know, I was born and raised in L.A. It had uh, drugs and sex in the 60s. I graduated high school uh, in the 60s, 1966. Okay. And I was at a party. There was drugs, and I took a handful, and it turned out to be bad drugs. And I remember going through a long, dark tunnel. Mm. It exploded in white light, and I was floating on the ceiling. Mm. I was looking down at my body, and a man appeared next to me and took me by the hand. We reappeared in a big hall. Mm -hmm. and. Um, in the center of the hall was 25 people sitting around a table. Here comes my grandfather down the corridor. I was very ashamed and mm. he just said, get over it. And oh. <laughs> he took me and introduced me to Jesus Christ. Amazing. Now, I knew I was dead. I knew my grandfather had died a year and a half previous. And I'm looking and I'm going, Grandpa, what are you doing? Why are you introducing me to Jesus right, Christ? Right. We're Jewish. Right, exactly, <laughs> because Jewish people just don't believe in, in Christ, Christ, right? No. Right. And he said, just listen. And I went like, <laughs> okay, okay. You know, what was I going to say? No. That's right, you know. that's right. So I turned around and I shook Christ's hand. And he looked at me, and at the time I thought it was so funny. He said, Eliezer, don't worry, I'm Jewish. And I went, oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> so I got to sit for four hours. They told me about my life, what I was going to mm. do, things, just where I was going to go. And I said, okay, okay. And I, next thing I remember, I reappeared on the ceiling, mm. floated down into my body, and I kind of shivered and sat up and went, oh, my head. <laughs> and I had this terrible throbbing headache. That's and amazing. all of a sudden these nurses started screaming and yelling behind me, I had been brought to the hospital DOA, mm. de dead on arrival, right, right. and I was downstairs in the morgue lying on a metal gurney with a tag on my big toe. And um, they were just getting ready to do an autopsy. Right. I'm so glad I came in before they started. I had hate when that <laughs> happens. <laughs> and so what I would want to tell, and just in case, um, for those of you listening, there is no death. And I can tell you that I don't have faith. I don't have belief. I know. Right. I know who Christ is. That's why I became a, what I call a completed Complete. Jew. Because we're eternal, right? Yes. And that's what yeah. uh, uh, the scripture says, that we, this is just a transition. 
Yeah. And, uh, you know, absent from the body, present with the Lord. You know. And I went to Israel and I lived seven years. One of the great things is I walked across the Sinai Desert and fasted for three nights where Moses camped with the Israelites. Mm -hmm. I walked across the Negev Desert mm -hmm. and fasted for seven nights where, Mo uh, where Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 wow. nights. I went to Jerusalem and I was baptized inside the tomb Christ was buried, in the tomb of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, in the tomb that they built what the church What an amazing over. experience that must have been. Forever. Oh yeah, radical change. Wow. And one of the things that uh, I did as a professional deep sea diver, if they listen to the first yes. half and they'll get that, right. one of the um, uh, things that I did was that city, Caesarea, but we did another dive in the Red Sea. This was very secret for the Israeli government. And we dove at a place called Nuebe, which was a very beautiful, open, white, sandy beach where the Bible talks about that Moses came through the ravine and it opened to a large sandy beach. It's the only beach on all of the mounts uh, of the Red Sea. So it was and deep sea archaeology? Yes, okay. I was doing underwater archaeology for the International Underwater Archaeology uh, Association. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, there underwater we found hundreds and hundreds of chariot wheels and bones and horse bones and human bones and helmets and spears and knives and uh, you um, actually saw all, of, all this. of these and they were encrusted with coral mm -hmm. but the, it was all a white sand so co there was no coral reefs mm -hmm. so the coral grew on something it always grows on something and it, you could see the shape of the of the yep. uh, four spoke wheels and the six spoke wheels that mm -hmm. uh, Pharaoh used and we know that was where Pharaoh crossed with the Israelites and now actually there's a movie did Exodus really uh, occur you know really happen there's a movie and they did that but I mm -hmm. was in the original excavation on that so it profoundly changed my life so you've had all these wonderful experiences uh, but you have a passion for the health nutrition yes. and you know and as we were um, talking before uh, we're spirit, soul, and body, and we know that we're spirits. And many believers, sincere believers, they want to keep their their spirits holy and their souls holy. But when when it comes to the body, taking care of the body, which is the temple of of the Holy Spirit. That's correct. And people forget that. Th th something happens. Right. What's going on with that? Well, there's a lot having to do that. I learned two major lessons when I was up there. Uh, number one is your body is a living temple, and yes. you must treat it like a temple. And I ask the question, you know, I do a lot of death and dying counseling with um, a lot of the patients I see. We see a very large uh, mm -hmm. cancer um, population. And I really give them that story to help them so that they know there is no death. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all have a fear. Nobody wants to burn to death or, right. you know, get right. tortured. But I have no fear of death yeah. at all. And if you have that personal relationship with God, personal relationship with Jesus Christ, right. of course, What's there to fear, really? Exactly. Nobody wants to, like you said, you know, uh, hurt or be in pain, but. You know, as I said, and absent from the body, present yeah. with the Lord. Plus, I did that tape as we were talking yes. the first time, the battle for God and science, because Stephen Hawking is looks at he's looked at as the smartest person in the world, and scientists are basically atheists. And mm -hmm. with my background with a doctorate in science, and from unbroken line of rabbis to the 15th century, mm -hmm. and a death experience, mm -hmm. I made this tape going against Stephen Hawking because his book came out, The Grand Design, That's and he fantastic. said, "You do not." need God for the creation of the universe. That Someone has to go against that. That is fantastic. That. And you know, you have a, a clip on YouTube. Oh, and, yes, and there so is. And so I was able to, uh, to see, see part of it. I haven't seen it. So thank you for, for bringing this in. Right. And I can get information. Yes. yes. I'm going to hold it up and for the audience. And it's almost four hours, all visual. And it goes from my microscope to the telescopes to back and forth from the macro and the micro. And I prove scientifically, I go through all of the precepts of physics to show very understandable to show that they are wrong and yes. their initial precepts and f out of that and even before that when I went to Israel and I studied and and learning that the body is a living temple mm -hmm. my passion was healing and, mm. and getting into um, uh, healing and, and as a naturopath and I got my doctorate in medicine I don't practice as an MD and uh, I would have had my license removed a long time ago <laughs> anyway so I didn't 
didn't ever do an internship mm -hmm. because they said, you can't mention vitamins, minerals, nutrition, right. or water. And I said, that's unethical. I that's can help right. someone. That's and they right. said, you'll get fired and you won't get your license. I said, then never mind. I don't right. want it. Right. So I practice as a naturopath, which mm -hmm. is really, how do you live a happy, healthy, holy life? And it's a holistic approach Correct. to the body. Uh, it, exactly. and, and the soul, actually, because you ha talk on emotional things. and um, Well, we uh, can actually speak about health. God okay. in, in our practice. As okay. a naturopath, sure. the basis of naturopathic medicine or naturopathic health care, or in essence, all Aborigine health care throughout the world, the foundation is spirit and God. Mm -hmm. That the foundation of all healing, all medicine, all plants comes from God. Now, as an allopathic physician, which is regular, MD Western medicine, medicine. Mm -hmm. you cannot mention God prayer in that. You can be sanctioned by your medical board and lose your license. Wow. So that is totally separate. It's secular medicine. Mm -hmm. Yet when you go to every continent of the world and you talk to the original peoples of that con continent, whether it's the Irish or the Greek or the Turkish or mm -hmm. the Egyptian or the American Indian or Australian Aborigines, anywhere in the world, and you ask them, where did your medicine come from? They all tell you it came from God. Amen. Okay, and American or, or allopathic doctors forget that when you go back, where did you learn your craft? Right. From another doctor. Where did that doctor learn it? From another doctor. Previous, going back in right. time, and they say it came from God. But it's that change, and that's probably a whole other uh, program yeah, that you I can mean, do. See. But, but uh, I, I know that you have this amazing website. And oh, you yes. have such wonderful topics that you address, and I have seen uh, clips of different things. Uh, I have a YouTube, I, a, a YouTube, too, and, 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 and on that's the amazing. website, by the way, and it's a free resource yeah. yes. for everybody, and we'll keep it free as long as I can afford it because that's my intent. I want to. I'm even putting my nutritional protocols going to be free online, so people can learn how to get healthy. There's mm -hmm. 35,000 articles on natural health, from vitamins and minerals and herbs and exercise and diet and nutrition and That's meditations right, yes. and every kind of anything having to do with health and, and psychology and spiritual evolution. And it's free. And That's there's 2,000 hours. And they can go to... What is that website? Naturalsolutionsradio.com. Just easy natural enough, huh? solutions, solutions with an S. Radio.com. That's, that's and they can get all kinds of information on water and, and even the ta our tape, the DVD. You oh, know, so. That's fantastic. Now, um, I think a lot of, let's say, believers, um, well-meaning, of course, I, the reason, one of the reasons why they shy away from alternative medicine is because some may view it a little bit as maybe too new agey or occultish. Or occultic. Occulti <clears throat> occultic. Yes. What, do you, what would you, you know say what to that? You know what they're forgetting? The Holy Spirit. Because think of what the Holy Spirit can do. And I use often a, a very classic example of a grandmother sitting on a porch knitting and her grandson's working on a car and all of a sudden she hears crash and the jack breaks and the car's on top of the grandson and she screams, runs over, lifts the car yes. up, he crawls out, she puts the car down and wakes up and says, what happened? Right. That's the Holy Spirit. Now, other religions or other places in the world, they might call it chi or prana mm -hmm. or um, healing energy. But think of laying on of hands. That has been talked about yes. throughout the Bible. Yes. And that energy, we are the breath of life. That's and right. That's right. There's a whole energetics that we now know that even in the universe, they Amen. have found that the, the basic structure of the matrix of the universe has information. Yes. And that implies intelligence yes. and so again I I have to tell that uh, Stephen Hawking's is incorrect <laughs> and I think if he learned some of the holistic health and believed maybe he, you know, yeah. but he's done very well with his ALS he's still alive probably the longest living ALS person ever yeah yeah. You know. Well, we'll pray for him too. Uh, yeah, of course. Pray for of him course. to come to uh, God. To, to <laughs> God, just, yeah. yes. Because uh, uh, bottom line, and I think what you were saying, I think it's it's the approach. If we give um, praise to, to Jesus Christ in everything that we do in mm -hmm. medicine, that's where it. Because I think 
that's what you were saying. It's the intent. It's how we approach things. Right. And that's really the difference. Even anyway. Einstein yeah. um, said there can be no conflict between religion and science. And that um, uh, he said that uh, they must go together. And so Hawking, when he took all of Einstein's work, he left that part out. Yeah. And uh, Einstein was very clear that there is some spirit, there is some energy force that holds the entire universe together. And they, right. again, that's what they're trying to study and look at. Absolutely, absolutely. But and that idea of the living temple, okay. think of this. People go to church all the time. They even go on um, vacations where you might go to an excavation, an old um, archaeological dig sure. of an old church. Mm -hmm. And you would never throw garbage on the walls of right. a church, correct? Right, right. Even an old right. one where it, no right. one's practicing there anymore. Right. Because it means something. Absolutely. There's a There's a, a context to it. Right. Yet people throw garbage in their bodies all the time. Yeah. And we are the living temple and they forget that. Yeah, I mean, I, I tell people, look, we all want to be Christ-like right. as much as possible. Well, we ought to at least eat like him. A exactly. <laughs> I mean, and even in Scripture, it's just like, uh, it gives like a, an admonition. Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Spirit? It's you like, don't you know? Well. You know? <laughs> and yeah. That's why when we look at the world today and there's genetically modified food and pesticides and herbicides and fungicides and radiation everywhere, you have to be conscious to how to live. Mm -hmm. And... Again, when you go back in Judaism, <clears throat> one of the reasons that people ate the way, of course, God told us how to eat. But that's right. And even that's Christ right. said, I'm not here to change one letter of the law. So he maintained his dietary habits. And exactly. I think that, you know, changed after Christ died, yeah, right. you know, and, and I, think I think we need to go back we, to that. Because the Torah gives us so many wonderful, uh, the wisdom mm -hmm. actually on how to live. And if we just, like you said, study and just ask the Lord for that wisdom. But, you know, it is kind of sad to me when I, you know, I've gone to different conferences like you. I'm oh, yeah. sure you have a lot of believers. And most of those people are so um, unhealthy. Or you go to a health conference and what's being served, the food. I, I, you know, I, you go to Vegas to I a big know. health conference and it's all just food that you would never eat. I tell my wife, mm -hmm. look, when I go vacate, you know, on a conference, you can shop. I get to eat. <laughs> So that's but, a good deal. But, it, it, you know, in the Bible, there was like, uh, they talked about longevity. And, oh, yes. And, and you're very much into that, and, you know, longevity. And also uh, when when uh, the um, Israelites were taken out of uh, the slavery. Oh, yes. The, uh, uh, the Lord says that there was no feeble one, uh, no feeble one among that's them. That's correct. There so, was no, no sickness. Al Alzheimer's. That's and, exactly. Yes. So that's what really what we're meant yeah. to, to be. Even right? the story of Daniel um, yes. when um, he said, I think, I think it was with um, the Egyptian, um, uh, fair, you know, his soldiers, and he said, "Let my men eat a certain way, and you eat a certain way, and after thirty days, we'll see who's." And of course, eating dates and figs right. and proper food, exactly. Daniel's um, uh, men were stronger and healthier. And healthier. And so we really think that that's an important. And people don't realize how food has changed today. Mm -hmm. um, they don't. You, you look at all of the cancers. Why is cancer? You know, they they look at why is it spreading? Why is it so rampant? Well, when you look at all the food that's sprayed with pesticides and herbicides and fungicides, all of those act as estrogen in the body. Mm. There's even a condition now with young boys having male breasts. Yes. Okay. And there's mm. a condition now with young girls starting their menstrual cycles at six, seven, eight years old. It's called precocious puberty. Mm. Where is it coming from? Again, it's these pesticides and herbicides and fungicides. Or whenever you cook in plastic in a microwave, those plastics get in the food and act as estrogen. And mm. we now know that it is estrogen that um, really stimulates all cancers, mm. all cancers. That's, and it's such a shame. That's fantastic information. And that's why organic is really uh, so much more important. And look at the stores now, Costco and Walmart and all these stores that used to be just the health food stores, you know, Whole Foods. Right. But now... You go to Costco, they have everything. Yes. You know, they have the grass-fed beef. They have all the... And it's so good. Yeah, it's you delicious. here, here in, El, in Las Cruces have really good stores. I think so. You know? So yeah. we, you know, we finally have a uh, Sprouts, <laughs> but we were like... 
lost in the wilderness. <laughs> <laughs> so, but now you can make the right choices. You can choose to eat healthier. And once you start eating healthier, and once you change your diet radically, you feel different. And yes. now when you eat something, I tell all my clients, look, you can do this for 30 days. At the end of 30 days, I want you to pick your favorite meals and go and eat them. Now, if you get sick, don't <laughs> complain. Accept it as what you eat. And one of the most profound things I tell everyone is I say, look, never think what's wrong. Think what you ate. So mm. every symptom you have, whether it's a headache or a rash, is going to be affected by your immune system and what you're eating. So people get that fear. Oh, no, I'm having a headache or I have this condition or that. What is it? What is it? And they get this fear. I say, don't ask what is it. Ask what did you eat? Mm, Think of what true. you eat. And when you really analyze, every, everybody knows what's healthy. Do I have to tell people that a baked potato is healthier than potato chips? Yeah. Or do they know that? Yeah, yeah, that that's true. But I think that what they don't know, and I think it could be very confusing for a lot of people, is what vitamins do you take? What oh, minerals? yes, there's I mean, certain there's, things. You, there's a millions to choose from. So what would you say is the best? Okay, there are certain <laughs> vitamins that everybody needs to be okay. on. That's vitamin D, number vitamin one. D. And I suggest people to get a vitamin D um, number in their blood test. You can get that, just request it from your doctor. And you want it up above 70, between 70 and 90. And you know what the research has showed now? that when you, It has shown that when you get your vitamin D between that 70 and 90, you cut your risk of every known cancer by 75%. Really? Now think of that that's, number. That's wonderful to know. Okay, now if there was a drug that cured um, and reduced your risk by 12%, don't you think it'd be headline news in every newspaper? And here's a vitamin. You, you would think so, them, right? And they don't. And yeah. the medical profession still says, no, no, we need more research. 40 years of research, we need still more research. Yeah, right. Because you look at um, um, medicine, it's, it's very expensive. And yes. drugs are very expensive. We need to change how doctors are paid. Mm. Because right now, doctors only get paid when you're sick and they have to do a procedure or they do a test. So that's why you'll go in on the, the, this test and this test and this test because that's how they're making their fee. Mm. A lot of people don't realize, how does an oncologist make a living? Do you know how they make their salaries? Selling chemotherapy. Wow. They buy it for pennies on the dollar and sell it for thousands of dollars. Think of how much breast cancer now, uh, the drug, is $130,000 a year just and, for one And drug. I think I read someplace that they had surveyed a lot of these, the doctors, the cancer doctors, and that, no, that a, a high percentage said that they would not take the chemotherapy. Yes, that's true. They, they don't like people to know that. <laughs> but it's, as, it's some of the studies have been showing as high as 90, 95, even 97 percent of all oncologists surveyed yeah. Yes. would not do um, radiation, radiation. And, um, ke and chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. I mean, but there are things. V Linus Pauling used to talk about taking uh, vitamin C and L-lysine. That's an amino acid and vitamin C. I like the uh, full right. spectrum vitamin mm -hmm. C. And he said, take it in a two to one ratio, two vitamin C to one L-lysine. And that okay. stops cancer from spreading mm -hmm. because it prevents cancer cells from making a, an, an enzyme called collagenase, which then allows that they secrete this enzyme and dissolve dissolves collagen and then they can spread. Mm. So it stops this enzyme from being produced and you can really help uh, stopping the spread, the metastasize. Because mm. once a cancer is metastasized, there are no chemotherapy agents. Mm. And um, when doctors tell you, oh, you know, yes, we have all these, no, there isn't. When you, once you have it metastasized, it's very difficult to cure any cancers. But, but we do, we do very well you with do. those. Yes, because we use oxygen on all of them. And Dr. Otto Warp, think of this, the cancer industry tells you we do not know what causes cancer. But in 1931, Dr. Otto Warburg, he's the only doctor actually to win two Nobel Prizes for his research on cancer 10 years apart, 
unopposed, meaning he didn't share mm -hmm. it with anybody. His first Nobel Prize was that cancer feeds on sugar. It uses sugar and it ferments the sugar to get its ATP energy. We use oxygen. So think of that. Do you know mm -hmm. of any cancer places telling you not to eat sugar or right. even to cut your fruit juice or Which carbohydrates? Which is so sad because that, that's, that's cool. like you said, that causes so much. That's yes. right. You go to an average chemotherapy center and you're going to see on the counter jelly beans and M&Ms and Three <laughs> Musketeers and, and oh. Snickers and Oreo cookies and soda pop. Comfort Lord forgive food. us because if we know yeah. we're deliberately doing this, well the doctors yeah. that they're delivering, that's a, the second that's Nobel awful. Prize he won 10 years later was he proved that when you introduce high amounts of oxygen and retrain the cells to use oxygen for their respiration, mm. cancer cannot exist. So you don't hear of any cancer programs no. using oxygen except in the holistic movement. We use ozone, we use hyperbaric that's oxygen, fantastic. we use the newest program now is called exercise with oxygen therapy or live O2. Mm -hmm. I have all of my clients do special exercise, breathing a mask, breathing very high amounts of oxygen. We're the only ones probably within 500 miles that do this technique. And that's it's fantastic. phenomenal. Yeah. We've seen reversals that we've never seen before in Parkinson's or Tourette syndrome. Have you ever seen someone with Tourette's? They have ticks yes, and they yes. can't stop. Nothing reverses that. And we've been seeing reversals. Our cancer, autoimmune diseases, psoriasis and eczema, which is such a social Praise stigma. God. It's all disappearing with high amounts of That's oxygen wonderful. and a change in diet. Well, you know, and scripture says, says that my people perish for lack of knowledge. Exactly. And so when they have this information, then they can make better choices for themselves. <laughs> right absolutely and, and I think that's probably one of uh, your uh, the, the focus or missions is to educate people knowledge, knowledge. Now, here's <clears throat> one of the things that I tell people and it's a key statement on the front page of my website self-knowledge because once you get knowledge you can never unlearn something self-knowledge without self change is self abuse yes Yes. And so when you gain this knowledge, you want to incorporate it into your daily life. Yeah. And there's certain things. So we talked vitamin C, we talked uh, vitamin D, magnesium. So many people with hypertension or constipation, they're going to all be deficient in magnesium. And any kind of magnesium other than magnesium oxide. So they, <clears throat> I think people, viewers, please go to his website or... Uh, you know, t take take listen your, to your the radio help. show. Come, listen they can even radio. call anytime, oh, anywhere fantastic. in the world. They can call fantastic. Saturday morning. Yes. Go to the website Natural Solutions right. radio, radio, and it's right there. That's fantastic. Could you believe we're out of time <gasps> again. <laughs> again? Oh my gosh! Again. Because you know, God wants you well. He wants you to live. Uh, he came to give you life and life abundantly to the full. So uh, He loves you so much. He wants you to eat right so that you can do what you're called here to do. Because when we feel sick, we can't fulfill our calling or our mission, but God loves you so much. Take care of your, your temple, and thank you so much for viewing us. Until next time, I wish you good health, success, and spiritual growth. And um, one sentence, just one sentence, Dr. That you want to this say. one, self-knowledge without self-change is self-abuse and your body is a living temple. temple. Treat it like such. Amen. That's awesome. Thank you Thank so you. much, Reverend Marie. Thank I really you. appreciate being Thank here. Thank you, Doctor. If you ever <laughs> want me again, I'll be glad to. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. So, so anyway. <laughs> oh, it's really nice, I think. For more, for more information, contact me at mariagoldstein7 at gmail.com or you can call me at 877-991-4800 or check me out on my website, VoicesInTheWildernessTV.com. Until next time, I wish you good health, success, and spiritual growth. Thank you. That was wonderful. That was so fast. Call for salvation. This is a call for salvation. If you do not know Jesus, this is a call for salvation. Salvation, respond to the call for salvation. If you don't know the Savior, this is his presentation. It's been 2,000 years that have passed, you see, that Jesus died on the cross for us. 
laid his life down on Calvary. Jesus Christ, the begotten Son, all the Father created.